Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and today I just want to give you uh, my weekly news, as I usually do for uh, September 1st. And I just started off with the uh, Black Lives Matter campaign. Um, the founder for the uh, Black Lives Matter for Savannah, uh, Jomo Johnson, uh, they got together around the uh, Forsyth Park area. About it was about like. 30 plus people that gathered gathered around and he said uh lots of protests happen when white police officers shoots a black person but when a black person is killed by another black person not so much is said which which was uh said by johnson and uh i've been saying this for a while that um you know black lives matter should care about black on black crime more than anything because when i walk down the street i don't fear a uh, a police officer shooting me in the back you know I fear another black person that's gonna shoot me you know I fear walking down the street and get robbed you know sometimes um, you know it's just I don't get that fear from police yeah I don't like police either you know but that's just a personal thing with me that I don't like police but I mean I've been saying that black, li black lives matter should care about you know black on black crime and this is a good step for the uh, the movement because I've seen everywhere else um, I, I don't really follow the movement that, that much so maybe you guys know more than me but in Savannah we don't really have that many police shootings not compared to Chicago or Atlanta or Jacksonville not even Miami um, you know all those places yeah hell even uh, Philadelphia so um, I think in those places you have to worry about yeah you know white cop on black violence maybe a little bit more but in savannah i mean it's just you got blacks killing blacks i mean that's really the majority of where the crimes come from or where the murders come from so um i salute to the um to uh, jomo johnson for his uh black lives matter campaign and uh if you guys feel like um you want to join the campaign as well hey um uh, you can uh, go sign up to the uh, black your local Black Lives Matter campaign. And also in my next piece of news, um, the city should be getting a new art center uh, placed in Savannah right off of Oglethorpe Avenue and Montgomery Street. Uh, and the uh, art center, it should have, uh, it should have enough room for a, a big theater, a studio, uh, and classrooms. And it, it says it will be one step closer for Savannah artists to uh, perform and other types of artists to, to perform. And the art center should cost $17.3 million. The uh, city of Savannah Council is scheduled to uh, for a, a cost agreement uh, Thursday, which is today, uh, for all the, uh, the project costs. And the construction should be from extended to throughout May 2018. So around the first quarter of 2018, uh, you should see this um, this building erected. And the construction manager also uh, promised that 20% of the construction fee will go to uh, business owned by minorities and women, uh, which is higher than what they uh, set for and 53% of the contract amount is going towards the business with locations in Savannah. And also, this plan also uh, will uh, also say it will replace some roadway that it will make Montgomery Streets into a two-way road between Broughton and Liberty Streets. And also, uh, the theater, which will have up to 464 seats, and a fixed stage and an art studio that can accommodate 100 seats and five classrooms and the gallery space. So um, this is something major for Savannah. Um, I like to see it uh, build. I mean, there's some uh, project models that's in the making, but I like to see the official project because if this goes through, a lot of uh, your local talent, uh, artists, street artists, uh, painters I mean you'll see all the art in the uh, Savannah Cultural Art Center that will be uh, the name of this and uh, in my next piece uh, 
uh, Savannah had a meeting uh, Tuesday night. Uh, Savannah Alderman Estella Shabazz uh, told the uh, residents around the uh, Coastal Empire Fair area, really the um, the Liberty City Community Center. Yeah, uh, she basically told them that the uh, 67 acre uh, Coastal Empire Fair property, uh, the city has no plan to uh, buy it for now, uh, which they almost agreed to purchase for $3 million. Uh, Shabazz said that um, whatever goes there, it shouldn't contribute to the community's decline. And um, the people in the uh, in the meeting for the Liberty City Community Center, they uh, they put up different ideas as far as like a grocery store. Some said uh, job training should be put there. Um, I mean, there was a there was a few um, a few good ideas that they, they threw out there. Um, hopefully, I could uh, travel over there just to show you guys how much space is over there. But I mean, it's sixty seven acres, so um, I feel like. What they could do is um, possibly put some uh, some apartments back there, uh, possibly a, a neighborhood, uh, not low income, but just a, a, a reasonable amount uh, apartment complex. Or if you don't do that, uh, a grocery store, I don't know, because just where it's set up is just so far back. It's like you got to go down the street just to um, just to get to this place it's, it's not um, right on the street so I mean there, there's some there's some good ideas that what they can do to this uh, to this area and they also said if they did put apartments there it could accommodate to 90 to 190 uh, apartment homes so that's just something that's potential so um if you have if you know somebody that has enough money that could uh, invest in this area i mean the city doesn't have any plans to buy it this area so and i doubt that the um the coastal empire fair would be this year because of uh contract issues so i mean you don't have to worry about the fair no more so yeah if you know somebody that's, that's willing to buy this uh, 67 acres um hey put it together and also, WGN is filming a uh, a TV show in Savannah, uh, right there off of uh, near near Bull Street, uh, near the uh, Chippewa Square. Uh, Sony Pictures Television announced that last week, Underground uh, will be filming in Savannah, which will be a ten episode season of a uh, Underground Railroad thriller where slaves attempt. A daring 600 mile escape from a Georgia plantation um, it, the shooting would take at least four months and it ex expected to spend close to 50 million dollars in the project the show delivered 3 million total viewers weekly in this first season and made history as WGN America's most watched original program ever in this freshman season so the second season, uh, is, which will be filmed in Savannah, will be expected to pre premiere early next year on uh, WGN America. So, this is a good move. Um, I don't know if they're getting uh, extras for their uh, their film, like how they did with the other film when they had The Rock in that movie in uh, Tybee Island. Uh, I don't know if they they had their um, their extras or anything yet, but if I mean if I could uh, get out some more, get some more information about this, um, I'll let you guys know when this airing and any, anything else because um, you know the whole slavery uh, the slavery trade and the uh, the slave run um, I'm interested in, in it. Also, it's in my city and the places that I know, so. I mean, it's definitely something to look out for. And uh, just to rewind to last week and my other news, a uh, former St. Joseph's Candler nurse on Friday was sentenced to 10 years in prison with 90 days to serve after pleading guilty pos with possession of controlled substance with intent to distribute. 
James Elliott Cook, uh, age 55, must serve the remainder of his sentence on probation and must surrender his nursing license as part of the ne negotiated plea deal before Chatham County Supervisor Court Judge Michael Carp. Uh, he pleaded guilty uh, of seven counts in indictment, which included charges in between November 12, 2006, oh, uh, November 12 through 16th, where he possessed oxycodone and several other drugs, using a, and he used a phone to facilitate facilitate the crime. So he was on the phone uh, talking about it. Maybe he was probably uh, texting. Uh, yeah, we can meet up this place, that place. Um, the agencies, various uh, prescription pills, medications, uh, two firearms, and um, more than $3,300, uh, I believe, worth of worth of uh, narcotics. And his, uh, his vehicle was repossessed off of uh, White Bluff Road. Uh, but the CNT was investigating Cook in November after receiving information that he was selling prescription drugs and uh, undercover agents made several purchases of prescri prescription drugs but none from the hospital but none from the hospital property and also in my next piece hey you guys know I like to save my the drugs for last um, we had a man sentenced to uh, 14 years in prison uh, Savannah man was uh, was convicted to 14 years in federal prison for trafficking cocaine uh, and Schedule One psychedelic controlled substance. Um, according to the documents, uh, Tyrone Antoine Broadnex was uh, stopped by police on July 22nd, 2015, and uh, undercover officers uh, saw him uh, do a hand to hand uh, drug transa transaction. Um, Near the uh, Victorian district, I believe that's like around the uh, Forsyth Park area, um, and uh, they searched uh, brought next car. And he had 95 bags of drugs packaged and a nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol with uh, a long clip, well, extra clip, and uh, he had a child in the back seat of the car as. Um, as he uh, drove through the city with uh, the guns and the dope and Broadnecks gave a full confession to the police and bragged that I sell every drug every drug was in there today um, his criminal history is uh, a bit long uh, he had involvement with guns and drugs that spans for ever since 95 at the age of 14 where uh, him and two accompl accomplices mugged him in uh, at gunpoint in downtown Savannah and um, he was sentenced to uh, for jail for that but he was re released in 2002 and shortly after that uh, he was arrested for selling cocaine uh, within like yards away from like an apartment building and he served less than half of a seven year sentence until uh, he got out and then in 2015 he was arrested again for trafficking cocaine and unlawful use of a uh, or a lawful possession of a stolen fi stolen firearm, and he was sentenced in 2007 to a 10-year sentence of incarceration. But he paroled in April 2008, so he was not even there for a year when that happened, and he paroled in April 2008. Uh, seven months later, he was involved with the, in a shooting in Savannah's uh, Hitch Village uh, projects. Um, I don't believe, I don't know if he was a shooter or not. I mean, they didn't, they don't say, but um, this guy, he has a, a long, long history. So, um, damn, I mean, they got this guy off the streets. And what I can say just about this is um, sometimes, man, you just got no one to give it up. Uh, especially when you're you're 35, you got kids, and you know you you can't you can't make a career out of this. You gotta eventually know when to quit, you know. And it's just, would you rather risk having 14 years to serve in prison, or just having a regular job and 
you know, just flying straight. I mean, I know it sucks to most people, you know, the fast money comes, and that, that's the major thing why people don't want to quit the drug game because all the the fast money that comes with it, you know, a regular working man might make a thousand dollars, uh, twelve hundred dollars in a week or have them uh, in two weeks or within them or have them much, but a, a drug dealer he could probably make. A thousand dollars in one or two plays, you know, depending on his clientele, or he can make a thousand dollars in in three days. So you got a lot of people out here that just don't want to give up the game. But I mean, the history that he had, I mean, he should have gave it up a long time ago, especially with all the run ins run ins he had. But as for today, um, Friday we should be getting a um, a tropical storm uh, hitting Savannah. Uh, I believe it should hit Savannah Friday morning. Uh, well, it should hit late tonight and throughout Friday morning. So a lot of schools should be um, should be closed. I, I know they just did the um, the the list for all the school closures. So um, just word of advice, man. Try don't even drive if it's if your area known for flooding in Savannah. Don't even drive, man, because um, it's not risking flooding your engine I did a video where I drove on um, I drove towards MLK and I had to back up because that street floods a lot uh, places on the west side flood a lot I don't know about the east side because when it rains I don't really travel out there uh, south side don't really flood like that because that land over there is elevated but when you're close to the west side you're closer to the river so I mean uh, west side places flood a lot so um, definitely uh, if you're living in Savannah, just get all the supplies you need, all the groceries that you need. Um, just try to stay inside for um, until like the end of or until the storm is over. Uh, I mean, I, I thank God it's not a a hurricane, and but it could have up to um, wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour. So if you work an outside job, I mean, you may have to tell your boss, or if your boss haven't tell you, hey, don't go to work that day because I'm damn sure not going to work because I care about my healthy my, my health too but this is all I have for today guys uh, I try to keep you guys update with all the things that I've I've covered in this uh, this video any updates will happen I let you guys know but it's your boy Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News and I'm out